Next, we travel to Culpeper, Virginia to learn how Hardwood Artisans has been designing and handcrafting solid wood heirloom quality furniture in Virginia for over 40 years. Hardwood Artisans uses traditional woodworking techniques with beautiful hardwoods and designs furniture to last a lifetime. Uh, we cater to our customers. We, you can pick which kind of wood, species of wood you do, handles that you're using. Um, we use all traditional joinery, dovetails, lock miters, mortise and tenons, and we strictly stay with hardwoods. Well, we actually design our pieces with the customers, so they'll come in and, and give us the parameters that they would like to have, and then we work with them, design a piece for them, and then if, if we really like it, then it kind of expands. And when we put it in the showrooms, we can tell if it's a unique piece because then the product grows and grows. And like the waterfall line, it's actually picked up and it's, it's our best seller and we've been doing it for years and uh, we just like building it. Hardwood Artisans was founded in 1976 as the Loft Bed Store, a two-man shop using only a router, skill saw, hand sander, and drill. In 1998, they changed their name to Hardwood Artisans to better represent who and what they had become, a fine furniture company that can design and make anything out of wood. In 2005, the company was acquired by the second generation of craftsmen who continue to grow the high-quality furniture brand. In 2012, the company expanded its operations from Woodbridge to Culpeper. Well, we started in 76. Two, two guys formed the partnership and got together, and we were called the Loft Bed Store. And then from the Loft Bed Store, they started out making storage beds and, and then into loft beds, and then the name was Loft Bed Store. So after they did that, we started building dressers and different size beds and tables and chairs. The, the name did not fit the company and what we was doing, so we changed to Hardwood Artisans back in 98 and then it, from then on it's, it's been hardwood artisans and that's because we, we actually can make anything that you'd like out of wood. And we started out in, in Lorton, Lockport, and we had a, a two bay area there. Then we moved, we built a building in Woodbridge and we moved over to a bigger facility. Then we outgrown that and we moved across the street in Woodbridge. And then we moved here to Culpeper where we are now. Hardwood Artisans has a furniture showroom at their shop in Culpeper, Virginia, so customers can get the full experience of furniture design and creation. Hardwood Artisans also has additional showrooms in Arlington, Virginia and Bethesda, Maryland, and everything you see in the showrooms is available online. We like to keep a showroom at the shop where we actually craft everything. That way when customers walk in, we can give them a shop tour and actually see how we we build it in the process that it takes. But we also have two other showrooms, and one's in Sherlington and the other one's in Bethesda. The first step is for customers to select a wood. They can choose from red oak, birch, cherry, maple, curly maple, walnut, mahogany, or quarter sawn white oak. Then they find the right boards and cut them to a rough length and lay them out. So we get an order for, for the piece that we're actually gonna build. So if it's a waterfall cabinet, we'll, we'll pull down the lumber pile and we sort the boards out so that actually when you leave the wood pile, you, you take a board and you cut it to rough length, which is usually two to three inches longer than the finish size. Whenever you do that, you know where that board's actually gonna be in this piece. <clears throat> so you're laying these boards out so that the color flows together for the, the drawer faces and the color flows together for the top. Once selected, the wood is ripped, a process that cleans the edges and prepares it for the next stage. Uh, after we pull our wood, we'll go ahead and go to the rip saw, and uh, we use a deal rip saw to glue up our panels. And then if we have a lot of the same uh, width boards, we'll use the gang rip. That way we can get everything through faster. Then they glue the panels on the glue rack. This includes the drawer faces, tops, sides, and dividers of the cabinet. They are left to dry overnight. So we go to the clamp rack and uh, we have a glue pot that we press the pedal and you dip your board in and you put it on this clamp rack and it has an uh, air ratchet on it and what it does is it tightens these straps uh, to a certain amount of pressure which we set per thickness of the board and it glues up your panel and you let it dry overnight. Uh, that way the glue is completely dry before you start milling it out. The drawer pieces are made on a molder. A molder is used to shape the wood with profiled cutters. 
They machine the drawer bars, legs, top frame, skirts on the bottom, and skirts on the side. Then they shape one edge of the legs using a 45 degree angle, creating the iconic look of this unique piece, the Asian inspired waterfall five drawer low chest. Next, they mortise the legs by creating a hole or recess cut designed to receive a tenon which lock the parts together. Then they notch the top of the legs to accept the top frame. They create the flare on the leg with a computer controlled cutting machine known in the industry as a CNC. We try to look at this like a, a big printer so that you can import a drawing from AutoCAD and then you can apply your tools to the lines and then you send it to the CNC. And then you, it'll hold a panel or a part down and it's a vacuum table. So, and then the machine will cut all around it and you can kind of get your parts that you want. Like you can get arches and skirts, you can get the lock miters and dovetail routes and it cleans up both edges and you can put a back groove in it. So it's, it's a really fun machine to run and watch run too. Then they cut a dado on the ends of the top frame to create a lap joint. A dado is a notch or groove cut on the face of the board into which the edge of another board is fixed. This creates the floating look. A lap joint is a joint made with two pieces by having the thickness of each at the joint and fitting them together. So what it'll do is, you know, you slide it in and then uh, we screw that down and it sits flush. Uh, under the top so that when we put our top on everything is there's no gaps between our top and our cabinet. After we pre-sand then we can uh, we can assemble and what we'll do here is we uh, on the case we have the lock miter joints which we run uh, three beads of glue, uh, two on the top and then one on the sides and then what we what we do is we clamp them up and uh, we use uh, pipe clamps and these uh, blocks that are arched and what that does is it allows the pressure to go throughout. They assemble the top frames. Then they glue the sides together. They glue the bottom skirts and top. Now they plane the top sides and divider of the cabinet. With a wide belt sander, they sand the top, sides, and divider. Then they CNC the sides and top. From there, they dovetail the divider and the drawer bars. A dovetail joint is commonly used to join the sides of a drawer to the front. Since we do a lot of traditional joinery and we're using hardwood panels, a lot of the machines out, out now aren't, won't, won't adapt to what we do. So we kind of change them a little bit to, to work with what we're doing. So like when we do dovetails, a sliding dovetail, we took an old double-headed tenon machine and we put two dovetail heads on them so that when you can cut them off on our sliding table saw, we'll get the dovetail, the sliding dovetail joint. Um, and then we, we made ourselves a hydraulic press since we do a lot of sliding dovetails. And with the climate change and that, sometimes they get too tight that you can't push them the whole way in by hand or hit them with a hammer. So we use our press. And not only that, it, it saves our guys too because that, when I first started it, we put everything together by hand. And by the end of the day, you were pretty worn out. So, so it makes it a little bit easier. They rip the drawer bars, then they cut off the drawer's sides, backs, and fronts. They dovetail the sides, backs, and faces. Then they cut a dado for the drawer bottoms. From here, they assemble the drawers. Then the dresser is assembled. Once assembled, the product moves to the finishing department, where they carefully apply a hand-rubbed Danish oil finish or spray on a lacquer. We usually use a Danish oil finish, which is hand-rubbed oil finish. Um, it's user friendly because that way when you get home if you actually scratch it or that you can sand and repair it yourself. Uh, we also do a lacquer finish which is which is just a coating over wood which isn't as friendly because if you scratch that you're gonna have to strip it and then reapply the lacquer. Most people can't spray a lacquer finish so we use a hand rub Danish oil for the majority of our stuff. Finally, the product is ready to be blanket wrapped and white glove delivered to the customer or displayed in the showroom. We can change sizes, woods, handles, finish, and that's what, that's what sets us apart also is you can come in and have a piece that's built for you and, and we keep that in mind and we actually deliver our own furniture also so once we make your piece you no longer, you don't touch anybody else. We have our own delivery crew, trucks, and we go out and set and deliver our own pieces of furniture. 
Hardwood Artisans is a company on a mission to provide the ultimate customer experience by designing and handcrafting solid wood heirloom quality furniture that will last a lifetime. What happens over time, wood moves. Okay, so even, even if it's a mortise and tenon joint, it's gonna shrink and swell. So a mortise and tenon is actually a mechanical joint and then when you put glue, it bonds it so it won't come apart. And staples, whenever it shrinks, they come loose. That's why whenever you buy other furniture or get other pieces and you make a move, and then the next time you make a move, or you rearrange your room, next thing you know your dresser's kind of wobbling. That doesn't happen with our furniture because of the, the dovetails and mortises and the tenons. Well, we're trying to make generational furniture so that you can just hand it down to your family throughout the generations, things that last.